Hello, good morning. Welcome if you are joining me. I'm just gonna check that I'm live in the right place. So bear with me just a second. Get the screen on view. Okay, I'm in the right place. That's always a good start. Elf is wanting my attention because I am talking. So this morning, so we are Tuesday the 18th of January. It's been a very frosty start again this morning, which I do love a frosty start. Um, and it's always better when it's teamed with blue skies. We don't quite have that yet. It's still very gray out there, um, but very cold, very, very cold this morning. So I think it's gonna change over the next couple of days. Good morning, Lucianne. How are you? Have you received some post from me? Alfie, clean my glasses. Go and lie on your bed. So I've put him, um, he's got a bed over here. He's always had a bed over here, but I've popped him a rug under, under my desk here that I'm sitting at because he always comes and lies by my feet. Um, and I know he's a dog, but I just don't want him to get a chilly belly. Oh dear, I'm a protective dog parent aren't I but so you know sometimes he'll he'll go over and lie on his bed but quite often just likes to lie under my feet so I think I've just made my glasses worse by cleaning them um so I thought if I put a little rug under there then he'll be a bit cozier and he's just gone and led on there now bless him so if you are joining please do say hello this morning I didn't let you know earlier what I was creating with but I'm going to be using a celebration item because celebration is only around until the end of February so I feel the need to share some of the lovely products that are available for you to earn as a free gift so I thought this morning I would use the friendly hello it's um, like a little bundle it's free with a 90 pound order which I do appreciate is quite a bit um, but it's definitely worth getting. So it's got beautiful stamp set with lined images in. It's got some great greetings in there. And then you also get a pack of pattern paper with it as well, which I have shown you previously. So um, I'm trying to ignore him. He's nudging my arm to stroke him. So he just disappeared back under the desk. So without further ado, I think I'm going to turn you down onto my desk, get everything straight and let's get stamping because I have to go out after lunch so I want to get a few things done before I go out so bear with the palm of the hand for just one moment hopefully a couple more people will hop on as well let's get you down get some light on I've adjusted my lighting wait for catch up and of course it's frozen on me just when i need to catch up need it to catch up i'm going to zoom in first and then get this grid paper ta taped down so that we have no movement if you're hopping on please say hello still seems a million miles away doesn't it could be my eyesight though a bit better I think I feel like you're on a bit of a wonk let's straighten up in fact let's straighten my straighten my stand because otherwise my grid paper's crooked and I find that really off-putting I don't know about you oh and I've turned it the wrong way always turn it the wrong way <laughs> um I love using my grid paper. I am at most happiest when I am stamping on grid paper. I just find it so helpful, such a good guide. Okay, promise no more faffing with my grid. Um, I just find it such a great guide. It helps me to get things straight. Obviously, we've got the measuring rulers on here. So mine is mostly always on the inches side because that's what I like to work in. I find centimetres really hard and I apologise to those of you that do use centimetres. Um, I'm always, always using inches. So today, let me pull in my basket of goodness. Here's what we are using. 
No surprise on the colour combo. Crumb cake, crumb cake, evening evergreen, soft succulent, pale papaya. I'm going to be using some memento black for stamping some of the images. I've got my everyday label punch, just doing something quick with that. This is the Friendly Hello stamp set. Let's find you it in the book. So it's nearer the back of the book. So this is the celebration brochure. Look at those papers. I've shown you them before, so I'm not going to grab them again. They are gorgeous, such lovely colors. Such lovely colors, very inspiring. Um, got some lovely like lined floral prints there, but also more plain backgrounds on them as well. So really beautiful colors. Let me just see if I can get comments up. Oh, you have received your, your swap, Lucian, that's good. And look at this lovely inspiration on this page. Just look at those ribbons as well. It just makes you want to pull out those colours and create with them. So that is, let's put that on my chair. Try not to sit on that, although I don't, I could be sitting actually to do a bit of colouring today. Um, so it's quite a large set. You've got 13 stamps in here. It's photopolymer. Um, and the size on the cover is the actual size of the stamps. Then I'm also using another new product. These are the Brushed Brass Butterflies, saying that slowly. They are gorgeous. I think there's 80 in here. Yes, so there's 80 in this pack in two different sizes. So they're really pretty. I'm going to be using those along with some gold metallic pearls because they team together lovely. So in this pack, you also get silver. You get a sheet of gold and a sheet of silver. There's 242 in that packet as well, so they go a long way. I've pulled out my Crumb Cake Stampin' Blend and also need to try and rem remember to talk to you that we have some new blends coming our way very soon. Um, some lovely kind of um, natural toned, kind of skin toned ones. My trusty linen thread, a blending brush. One of these is never far away, is it? And today I thought I would do a bit of colouring with some daubers. I don't know, I don't use these very often, um, but they're great for adding colour. So I've got two that I've inked up here and I will show you those in the catalogue. And I'm going to team some, I'm going to be using up some of my scraps. That was today's kind of theory. I wanted to share this stamp set but show you um, how easy it is to use up your scraps. So I mean nothing rocket science in there really about using up scraps but I think every time I go to my scraps box and in in I've got a, quite a large box bigger than my grid paper and inside I've shown you these before I have a4 envelopes that I label with each colour in and this is an easy access for me to locate my scraps but the trouble is this is what happens it is full there's too many scraps in there when I get to that point I quite often gift them to somebody who will make use of them um, but I feel that it's a bit of a mission sometimes to try and use up our scraps. So I'm just going to try and zoom you in a weeny bit. So I've mounted up the stamps I'm going to use on here. Let's pop my embossing folder behind. I've had more new products arrive, um, but no time to play with them just yet. Now, before I get in, I am going to show you the daubers made a marker on my page in case you do not have these never used them they're on page 129 they're number six they're just here they come in a pack of five um and they're four pound 75 so really good value so let us put those books out of the way because i will be sitting i do believe and let's pull in my first it oh stuck to it then couldn't grab it okay so talking of scraps 
and I cannot pick anything up still and I've painted my nails as well which makes it even harder. These were out of my scrap bag just in I may have trimmed but they were longer pieces that I've trimmed to the width that I want so they're all the same width um, but I quite often end up with skinny pieces like this and I will admit I don't throw them away. Oh good morning Belle, you're on a flying visit, you've got to take Molly out for a walk, lovely. Well thank you for stopping by, you know you can always catch up on the replay if Facebook plays game. So definitely cannot pick anything up today. So not not a lot of supplies today. Um, starting with my base of basic white, so it measures five and three quarters by eight and a quarter and we'll just fold that one and then we know it's done I've done a dodgy bit of cutting here that happens often can you see it's not quite straight I'm going to trim that off I like the edges of my card to meet although I have heard that the front the front of a card should always be slightly wider than the back so that you've got something to lift it open with, if you know what I mean. So there's a bit of an overhang, but I, I rarely do that. Then we've got a front layer. Where's my ruler? And this measures three and a half by five and one eighth. And this could be any measurement. This is a layer that's going on my card. So it could be slightly larger if you would prefer. But um, I'm going to be doing some different things with this layer. So I wanted it to be slightly smaller. My scraps, I'll give you measurements. They all should measure. So I've got pale papaya and soft succulent. They should measure three and seven eighths wide, which they do. And then you could use any width that's just in your scrap pile. But this one is one and a half, one and an eighth, and then like a quarter of an inch. But as I've said, just pull out scraps, just pull out strips from your little bag, however you store. It'd be interesting to know how you store your spare pieces of cardstock. Um, I know some people store them in colour families. But for me, I just like the easy access of going to a pocket, an A4 pocket, pulling it out and then having it on my desk so that I can keep kind of referring to it and pulling out extra pieces if I want to. Um, so that's our layers. Now, what I want to do on this piece to start with is add a bit of colour. So I'm going to use a blending brush with a crumb cake ink. Let's find a bit of scrap. And we're just going to add, you see me do this all the time, pick up colour, can you see, yeah. Pick up colour on my brush, take the initial harshness away from it, and then gently, at first, add colour to this layer. And I'll probably have to pick up a little bit more. Hopefully you can see. Oh, it's so annoying not being able to pick anything up. I don't think it shows as well on, on camera as it does in real life. But I think we'll just add a little bit more up here. And that was quite a lot more. That always happens, doesn't it? You think just a little bit more and then, oops, a bit too much, but it'll be fine. Oh, I'm going to leave that open because I need that. Now, you know how much I love a splat stamp and I love this image in this set. So I've mounted that one up ready. And I think I will... Shall I do that now? I'm going to do it after. First, I'm going to open up my Evening Evergreen which I adore. 
and then I've also mounted from the set. So even though your eyes are drawn to these beautiful lined images, um, I love this solid kind of leafy image as well. It's just really good for backgrounds and, um, you know, filling in spaces. And I love, I do use this solid stamp inside this leaf, but I've also used it, in fact, I've got one here. I've used the solid stamp on its own Alfie, he's having a scratch under the table and I can see my phone wobbling around. Um, you can see there that I've just stamped that one and cut it out on its own. So such a pretty set, such a pretty, pretty set. So this one looks a bit stained. I have cleaned it. It's still got a green ink around it, but I'm going to start off and I've got a feeling, oh, my little finger just went in the crumb cake got a feeling I re-inked this evening evergreen. My brain is not engaging very well today, so you'll have to bear with me. I had a driver ring. I'm just going to stamp this straight down onto my layer. I had a driver ring at five this morning, and it wasn't one of Jason's drivers. It was a driver who was doing um, a delivery into their yard this morning but he rang at five o'clock to get the postcode i mean five o'clock should he not have done that the night before when he was planning his route never mind i mean you know i've been waking up early anyway right this one i'm gonna put maybe up here i'm guesstimating how stunning Do those leaves look on the plain background? So really enjoy that and enjoy the, the darkness against the very pale background. And now I can add in, as I was about to do before, my splats. So yeah, I'm feeling a little bit tired this morning. Probably no more than usual though. And I'm just gonna add I'm not stamping off, I don't think. Maybe I am. Let's stamp off on one and see what happens. Let's put one over here. There's something in there. Bit of fluff or something. So do be careful of that from whatever you're using to clean. I use my chamois to clean my stamps, but if you sometimes I will finish with a wet wipe. Sometimes the fluff from a wet wipe sticks to your stamp. So um, be wary of that. We're gonna stamp off. What was I saying? Can't remember now, that's what happens nowadays. <laughs> Lost the train of thought. Yeah, so this driver rang and went to bed reasonably early-ish last night, 10 o'clock. We did go in the hot tub. It was a beautiful evening for hot tub tubbing because it was cold, it was crispy. I have to be honest though, whenever we, we are about to go in, I'm always like, we, we lit the fire as well. I lit the fire at about five o'clock just for a cozy evening. And um, I'm always a bit reluctant to have to go up, put swimwear on and then step out of the door into the fresh air. I mean, it's worth it once you get in. But yeah, so that was nice. And then my body was lovely and warm to go to bed. So that's my first layer. Now, the other thing I wanted to do, little trick. It's not a trick, but a little something using the everyday label punch. Need to grab a pencil. My lovely Mercure pencil. And I'm going to make a little mark. Fluff off my jumper down near the bottom might zoom you in a teeny bit more i could regret this take my pencil out of my hand no it's not going to do it a little bit probably didn't make any difference whatsoever it always makes me nervous as you know because it normally flips my camera around what i'm going to do is just make a little pencil mark um where do i want it quite low so I'm going to line my paper up with the grid and then I'm going to put a little pencil mark like one and a half squares up on each side. So one square, one and a half square. 
like that. And I'm going to open up my punch using it from the reverse. Now that could be too low to the bottom. Let's just go with it. And I'm going to just take a little notch out. Was quite low to the bottom, but it's fine. Oh, I can't do it that way. I have to do it this way. And then do the same on the other side. Can you see where my... Hopefully you can see. I'm going to do it slightly up because I did that on the other one. And just punch a little notch out of there. So I've got like two little grooves cut out from either side. Now some... It's looking like that one could have gone in a bit more, but I'm going to leave it as it is. You can always go back in and notch a bit more out if you've gone further on one. Now, of course, if you have been with Stampin' Up! for a while and you have some of our old circle punches, it's much easier to do that with that. But I think when you buy a punch, you have to look at the different ways of using it. Like this shape here, um, you, can, you can punch it twice to make a smaller... Shall I show you? Let's grab a scrap, a scrap. So if we punch it once, then we feed it back in. Can you see how you can create a different size label? Right, let me focus. So you could create smaller labels or fabulous punch because you can do lots of different sizes and shapes with it so that one there you will find all of the punches at the back of the catalogue I've made a little marker we have loads look at them all from page 147 lots of po uh, punches in there and I love that it shows you the actual size of what the punch punches out. Okay, where were we? Let's have a quick look at comments. I have to scroll up to do that. Yeah, I know, Belle, <laughs> this guy, he could, he must have had, obviously you have to have paperwork when you're delivering goods. He must have had something, but he was querying because they, they've got a brand new warehouse and he was querying that they'd moved. But Jason said that he'd already spoken to someone yesterday, so a bit annoying. Jay was not happy. Good morning, Mrs. Cliff. How are you? Got the heater on in the cabin to do some crafting. Oh, lucky you. Enjoy. Enjoy, enjoy. I'm looking forward to seeing you girls on Thursday. Okay, so this layer we're going to put to one side for the moment. And we're going to do a bit of stamping. So let's bring back in this scrap. I'm going to need my mat because let's have a clean sheet of grid. Love treating myself to a clean sheet. I'm going to use my mat because the Friendly Hello is photopolymer. So Stampin' Up! recommend a spongy mat. Um, this is the one that goes with the Stamparatus, but you can purchase. Let me grab mine. Oh, it's very, it's in a state, it's very old. You can purchase this mat, the Pierce mat. That does just the same job. But my, my Stamparatus mat always lives right next to me in my tool caddy so that it's handy. So I'm going to ink up these two beautiful images. I'm going to ink them in Memento. And then I'm going to let them sit and dry for a moment. What are you up to, little man? It's too cold for him to sit down. The hallway downstairs, it just gets freezing. There's no heating on downstairs at the moment. We don't heat it. We can heat it, but we don't. It's a waste of energy if nobody is down there. Um, so the hallway gets really chilly. Those of you that have been here to the studio, you know that when you step down the stairs, as soon as you get halfway down the stairs, you can feel the difference. Sorry, I'm just inking up, don't think you can see this off screen. The lovely double flower image and the bird on the branch. Every time I ink these, I fall more and more in love with them. So we can put the lid on that.
can do up our crumb cake. And we'll do one more bit of stamping while we've got this out. And I didn't locate any scraps in my kit, but I wanted to pull out this one from the same set. So I'm only using stamps from this set today. Hope you have the best birthday. And I'm gonna ink this up. Now, that isn't gonna fit on this. I'm gonna do it half and half. And I'm gonna to switch to this piece. Because I'm gonna split this greeting up. Oh, ink is somewhere, unless that was just off my block. Plus I've got a curvy bit of cardstock. So let's do that like that. And then another one to get the top of the words. And I'm not worried about that because I'm not using that bit. And then what I am going to do, while I think about it, is just stamp. Let's do it on a separate. Another set of flowers. So that they dry nicely for the next card. And just pop those to one side. Okay, let's move that evergreen ink right out of my reach. Now what I'm going to do is colour in with my soft succulent and my pale papaya. Just move that out of the way. I'm going to use my daubers. So these were brand new daubers that um, have only been in this colour. So I will see you later, Belle. Have a lovely walk. Wrap up warm. It is freezing out there. Um, let's just chop off that end of it. And that bit as well. Get my view back on. And then simply, all I'm going to do, I do need my scrap back in. I'm so anal, aren't I? Even when I get this grid paper out, I like it to be facing up the right way. Gosh, the OCD, it kicks in sometimes. Let's start with the pale papaya. So I'm just going to gently, now some people like to actually put their finger in here, but I prefer to just hold it. I feel like I've got more control. Plus, there's not a lot of room in there. I don't know, I just like to hold on to it. So I'm just gonna take a couple of dabs into it, pull a little bit off. Can you see how intense that is? And I'm gonna start just in the center of the flower. So this is really super easy coloring. If you don't have any of our blends, stamping blends, you can color in Let's just pull a bit more for the next one and just go gently. You can colour in using these daubers. They're, they're brilliant. And then all I'm going to do is just like pull colour out. They're not very precise, of course. I'm just going to try and smudge the centre of the flower. Might have to add a bit more colour. Um, they're not very precise, so you're not going to be able to go like either right up to the edges. But I just love how easily you can add a bit of colour. Now I'm quite heavy on the centres on both of those, but it's something you can, <clears throat> excuse me, play with. But I think that's good enough for a bit of colouring. So quick, so easy. Then I'm going to do the little flowers over here. So you'll be surprised how much ink you actually pick up. That's why I'm, I'm kind of dabbing a bit off. So you can kind of use the edges 
of these daubers as well. So you can kind of turn them on an angle so that you're not kind of going over. And I'm gonna just pick up an intense bit on one side and add it just to the center. But I'm not too worried about, you know, it blending or looking perfect. That's, it's just a simple quick bit of coloring. And then with the soft succulent, I'm gonna do exactly the same, but I'm gonna color in the birds. I'm gonna pick some up, take a bit off, because that is quite dark, can you see that? And I'm gonna start on his belly first, because that's where I would, if it's gonna be dark, that's the area I would like it to be dark. And I'm just gonna go really gentle in a circular motion. Might take a bit more off. You can see there's a lot of ink on there, probably from where I colored my original. And just add, but then go back in a bit heavier on the belly area. I'm going to be trimming him out, so I'm not too worried. And I just want to do a little bit of colour on the tail. Okay, so nothing very precise. And I just want to colour in the branch. So I pulled out my light crumb cake. And I'm literally just... Oh, I went right over the edge of the flower then. Never mind. Oops, just there. It won't hurt. And then we can cut those out very quickly. You know I cut quite quickly, so. Hello, Linda. How are you doing? Thank you for joining this morning. All the way from Nova Scotia. Oh, my goodness. So what is your weather doing there? It's very chilly here in the UK. Let's cut and chat. Yeah, you know I can cut quite quickly. So I'm just going to trim around the whole of this bird. And I want to go right in and cut out this piece here, depending on what you're doing. If you were sticking this onto a white background, you could get away without being too intricate with your colouring but because the background is going to show let's get my scissors back in then I want to cut inside there so so what time are you Linda what time is it with you out of interest Quick trim around. Yeah, I, I do love, I love these cold frosty mornings. I love the dark mornings as well. Never thought I would say that, but I do love waking up when it's dark, getting up when it's dark. I equally love the bright, fresh mornings. Longing to open up the velox so that I can hear the birds outside and the ducks swimming on the pond. Don't think that'll be happening just yet though. Pretty. So simple colouring, but I think quite effective. And I was having a play around with different ways of colouring in these flowers. Of course, we've got our watercolour pencils, which are fabulous. Um, you've seen me use my stamping blends with them. Um, and then I was playing a couple of days ago when I was playing with this set. I was using one of the stamps from this set, that's the splatty spotty one, to actually colour in this flower. I'm sure I kept it. I'm going to have to have a look. If, if it's somewhere, it's right. I can't look and cut. It's going to be right to the left of me where my stand is because I usually pop stuff on there that I know that I need to be looking at or be using or snacks. <laughs> There's never a snack far away from me being such a grazer. I don't eat a lot of biscuits though, I will say that. I, I, do, I do like to graze, but I won't eat both of those in one go. Okay, so I'm just curling the edges. 
I do the same on the bird carefully because I don't want to pull him apart from this branch. And then we'll turn the leaves up the other way. What else do I need? I think that's it. Let's start, let's cut this out actually while we're here and then we can start sticking together. Good morning, Vicky, good evening. How are you? Your internet is playing up tonight. Oh, technology, as I will always say, it's only good when it's working properly. It does drive me insane. Honestly, I've been trying to watch other Facebook lives and it just constantly stops like midway through always seems to stop at the same place it stops midway through and then that the circle of doom spins around in front of you while it thinks and then it ends up doing nothing and then then you refresh the page and you kind of get nowhere fast i ha I, I had to give up the other day watching trying to watch um a Facebook Live replay because it just would not play ball. Right, what do I want on here? I just want have the snip. Hope you're in view. I've zoomed you in quite a bit, haven't I? Right, let's move all those bits out of the way. So we've got have the best birthday. Let's bring back in this layer. Oh, I've also got some love hearts here as well. Don't you just love a love heart? The other day I was over here and it was about quarter to five. And I started to get the shakes. Um, I call it the EBGBs. You know when the sugar levels drop. And um, I had to raid my cupboard of treats because I'm always buying I have a whole box full of treats and snacks that um that I pick up at the supermarket so that I can you know make packaging for them or gift them and I found a mini packet of love hearts and they did the trick I'm going to say they they took the shakes away until I had to go over and and cook dinner right what I want to do is tie some of this linen thread so I'm going to cut one piece but then I also need a little teeny weeny bow. I'm just running my thumb nail and finger through this just to straighten it out a little because when it comes off the spool, as pretty as it is, um, I find it hard work to tie anything with it when it's all curly. So you've reset the internet, Vicky. Okay. And you're all good down under. That is good to know. Good to know. So I only want this to be small. So I don't want much of a tail down here, which will make it hard for me. But let's see how we go. Oop, nearly lost it through then. So did you all have a lovely weekend? We had a good weekend. I worked on Saturday, as per usual, in the morning. Then I'm going to have to trim that on Saturday afternoon. Always tell you my life story, don't I? Let's get a glue dot for this. Uh, we went out to a car garage to have a look in the showroom at, uh, at a car for Jason because he's after a new car and he's driving me insane looking for them, for the right one that's got the right mileage and the right spec. You know what they're like. And I'm going to pop a little glue dot. I'm going to pick. I'm nearly at the, at the end. But look, I have a lovely new box waiting for me. Um, let's get my take your pick tool. So, yes, yeah, so we went to Stratford on Saturday. Stratford is lovely, but we didn't have time to kind of stop anywhere and have a proper coffee. I'm just going to put one down there. Actually, I've rolled it. I didn't need to roll it. Let's see if we can flatten it out. That's better. We don't want it popping up too. I'm so in the habit of rolling these to stick things on. Just wanted it flat, really. Oh, 
Now it's stuck to my take your pick. You can tell it's live, can't you? And then I'm going to wrap my thread around. Rather than trying to tie this from the reverse and then tie a bow at the front, I'm going to do them separately. I always do them this way. So I've just attached it at the back. I keep forgetting you're so close, sorry. And then when we add our bow, it will look like they were both done together, hopefully. So I'm going to add some dimensionals on the back of here. Yes, yeah, so we went over to Stratford. Wasn't 100% sure about the car. But then on Sunday, we went to look at another and it was a bit further afield. It was a bit of a road trip. So we went to near, well, to Braunton in Devon. And we actually met um, my son's girlfriend, Coles. We met her grandparents who lived right there. So we met them um, for a walk on the beach and we took the camper so that we could take Alfie and he'll be comfy and that we could sort of stop and make a coffee. Um, so it worked out really well and yeah, ended up buying the car. Thank goodness. So he can stop stalking the internet now um, and stop like wondering which one's going to be the right one. Job done. So... Right, I'm going to start using up some of these scraps. So I've given you the measurements of these already. Let's get out the glue. Oh, Tombow is already trying to escape. This is quite a new one. And I'm going to pop this down at the bottom. Yes, yeah, so we had a lovely road trip, but we left at 10 and we didn't get home until nearly 7. So I felt like I didn't really get much of a weekend at home. Well, I didn't really, did I? <laughs> um, but it was lovely to get out. And it was a shame when we got to Broughton, we parked up on, I think it's called Saunton Sands. Some of you locals might have even been there. Um, so we parked up on the beach and then it started to drizzle and rain. <laughs> then we had a soggy doggy with... Um, Sandy paws, which wasn't the best. So, I mean, thank goodness we were in the camper. We just sort of opened up the garage. Towel dried him off and he was fine. So, right, I'm going to put the next layer, leave a little gap and just pop that up above. So I'm just like creating some back a background using up these scraps. And then the final piece, I'm going to pop that up above. So I'm not really measuring the gaps, just popping them down, even though they do look quite even. And then this one is going to sit on top. So yeah, we did have a lovely weekend. It just seemed to come and go like they do. Oops, I left one behind. So I hope you all got to do something a bit different, maybe. Got yourselves out and about for a bit. Got to see family. We did get to see, I don't think I told you last week, Sophie and Alex have a new puppy. Oh my gosh, he is the cutest little poppet on the planet. In love with him already. Um, yeah, Archie his name is. He is so cute. He's another Spaniel, so Alfie will have a playmate. So next I'm going to pop down in this one here and I'm not going to put any dimensionals on it. You can see that I've already given it a bit of life and I've kind of bent it in half and I'm just going to add a bit of glue in the centre there just to anchor it down. Now I think I'm going to go that way. I'm debating how high or how low or how far over. Let's just put it down and hope for the best. Need to hide the end of that stem. I always, I can never decide whether this flower looks upside down or not. Has anyone else thought that? I think it looks okay both ways. But whenever I put it this way, I always feel that it looks a bit upside down. 
but we are hiding some of that one. Now, I think I'm going to pop this one here, but I think I might just pop it on a dimensional. Although I'm then going to have two layers and is that just more trouble? I'm going to put it on one. <laughs> Being risky. Right, where else? Let's put one down at the bottom on that flower. And then if I pop a bit of Tombow here, that will just anchor the side of it so it doesn't twist. I just put a bit there. And I need to hide that. So hiding most of that flower, but that's fine. I've got a little gap in there. Maybe I'll come over just a smidge. Or up a smidge. That will do. Don't want to be too fussy. I have hidden most of that flower that I said looked upside down. but So I'm just layering up. Nothing rocket science, nothing too tricky. And then, let's move that to that side. I want to pop these on two dimensionals. Could stick them flat. Maybe for speed I will stick. No, I like them popped up. <laughs> so I'm just going to snip into my edge, into the outer leftover piece and pop some skinny strips of dimensional. My MacBook hasn't timed out yet. It normally times out by now. And then what have we got? Have the... I feel like I'm all fingers and thumbs today. Have the... Oh, oh, <laughs> it's alive. Get you straight before before we press you down, have the best, it still looks crooked, just lift it, it's the good thing about a dimension or you can move it, have the best birthday, just move that bit of dimensional under, we'll pop that one down there, just gonna have a quick drink. Thank you, Ellie. You think it's pretty. And then my little bow's gonna go down here. This is where I get to roll. Get into the end. Bit of fluff stuck on, bit of actual glue dot from the last one stuck on the end of there. I'm just gonna roll, roll that glue dot up, pick it up and pop it on top of my twine like that add my bow just going to push that glue dot in a bit so it's hidden and then at first glance you would think that had been tied together so around the front and then tie your bow that's way too tricky and fiddly and then to finish I thought I would use one of these lovely brass butterflies aren't they gorgeous they're going to last you a long time because there's so many of them and I'm just going to pull one off and pop it up here so they're already they already have adhesive on the back. So there we go. Job done. I didn't want to add anything else on. I mean, we could have put a bit of Winker Stella in the centres of the flowers. But I feel, even though it is just stamping and cutting out, it looks it's quite busy. There's quite a lot going on. So there we go. Hope you've enjoyed that one. Got another one for you. Let's put that to one side. 
got one more. How are we doing? 10 to 11. Let's bring in my kit. Obviously, going to be the same but different. We're going to do something else with our scraps. And we're also going to be using, which isn't in my basket, let me find it. The new bow punch, which um, is in the mini catalogue. I'm going to grab the stamp set that goes with it. So it's on a bundle with the bows and blossoms. Absolutely adore this. Now we're using this stamp set at my Creative Escape next month. And um, there's an option to add on the punch to go with it. It's going to be such a usable punch in your, in your stash of products. So we've got some more scraps here. Exactly the same. I've cut them to the same width. I've just pulled out strips and cut them to the same width as each other, which should be three and seven eighths. Yep. Also got another skinny strip of the pale papaya. And I've got this bit here, which is soft succulent to do a bit of punching with. So let's put that by the punch. So base layer, basic white. I am thinking, I don't know what interest there might be, but I'm thinking of doing my creative escape in a box. I did offer it last time, um, but I need to work out prices and get that up. But the projects, I'm looking at the box full of projects. There's four, four 3D projects, so four packages with coordinating cards. Um, I'm really, really pleased with how they've turned out. So yeah, lovely bit of inspiration for you. Um, I know a lot of you like your 3D projects, so it's always nice to have lots of ideas for packaging as well. So what I want to do on this one is bring back in my blending brush. There may well be enough on here. Let's use up what's on here first. So this is with crumb cake. And I just want to do this top part. I'm going to need a little bit more. Oh, Vicky, good night. Good evening, sleep well, and I hope you can come back for the replay. My comments don't work well on here. Um, hello Kay, thank you for stopping by my lovely, how are you doing? How are you? So I've just added a bit more crumb cake there. pressing quite firmly I do quite like to sort of get as much out of my brush as I can before I sort of finish using it let's put the lid on that one because we are done there is a little line in there I don't know what that is maybe it was a bit of adhesive or something stuck to to my card base before before I use the blending Right, the other thing I need to do is emboss these layers. Do you remember I pulled in my timber embossing folder? Somebody's having a huge yawn under the desk. And I'm just going to pop these in. Now, if you didn't have scraps, what I would recommend you do is like emboss one whole piece like that and then cut it down into strips after. So I'm just going to sort my layers out on my machine. Not using any dies today, just the embossing folder. So I'm going to run that one through. Nice Alfie hair there. I don't know where they come from. They're in the air. He's not a multi dog at all. He's not. He doesn't molt hugely. So every now and then, on the white background, you see a dark chocolate hair. Bless his little heart. Before I had a dog, I would have been horrified to have found a dog hair on my desk, but. When you get a pet, I don't know, you kind of just like mellow to it. It's so strange. 
So I've got my three pieces here. And I'm going to start with the medium size one first. I'm kind of looking at them because I'm trying to figure out what's... I want them all to be on the same side. Not that it would make much difference. They do look slightly different on the reverse, so I'm just going to add... I've got a nice bubble of Tombow coming out of there. Add this one first. Also remember when you are embossing, depending on your embossing folder, it is going to stretch or shrink your layer. That does happen. I found it with the new, what's the new one called? Is it Mosaic? Where is it? A oh, gingham. On this one, it definitely alters the size of the paper you are embossing. All right, we're going to lay that one on the top. So we're doing the same as before. We're just using up some scraps that we've cut to the same width. And we're just adding like a texture background to a plain white base. So let's pop some Tombow on here. Add that one in. Like that. And then, to keep looking and thinking, what's next? What's next? Trim off this. Do some quick colouring again. Have a little seat. Let's bring this in just in case we go over the edges. And again, I'll start with the pale papaya. Go in the centre a bit, well, first, so sort of quite intensely with colour in the centre. Just checking you can see what I'm doing. And then kind of like smudge it together. And then gently in the centre to start with. And then just kind of pull the colour out. Using the edge of the dauber, if you can, to get closer towards an edge. Might just add a little bit more in the centre. Gently, we don't like want a circle. There's quite a bit of ink on there. If I press that down, you can see there's still quite a bit of ink. And then these little flowers here. It's just so quick. And so effective, I might just dab a bit in there. From this angle, I don't know whether you can actually see that. I've got Tombow on my nail. I think that's glue dot, actually. That's the one that was stuck to my take your pick tool. So I'm going to leave it at that. I think there's enough colour on there. And then with the soft succulent, take a bit off. Start very gently on the tummy area and then just pull the colour around a bit on the tail and then go back in to add more colour to the, the underneath of the bird. Then, oops, oh look. That was what I did. Thought I caught my nail on it. Let's put that one back for later. <laughs> I might have lost another one somewhere as well. It's in the box. We'll grab a nose in a minute anyway. And then we'll just colour in the stem. And quickly trim around. Okay, it's playing up. I know, I don't know why Facebook does that. Well, I hope you do come back for the replay and I hope that it plays, plays ball when you come back on the replay because as I said, I'm not convinced that it's an internet issue because, you know, if I'm watching anything else or watching something on YouTube, I don't get that kind of 
circle of doom spinning round and round while I'm waiting for the page to like catch up. I think, I don't know, I don't know what it is. I'm not sure and I'm not technical enough to even think what it could be, but, but thank you for stopping by anyway. It's been lovely to have you. Hope you've enjoyed the project so far. So, yeah, so we have shorter celebration, remember, now just until the end of February. Sorry, I was quite close then. Until the end of February. So you have quite a while to earn yourself this. I'm not sure whether or how limited the supplies are of the celebration items. I'm thankful that we have all of them available because I know in some of the other markets they've been struggling to get things shipped to them. Um, just because of problems with shipping ports, containers, lack of containers, not space, not enough workforce due to COVID. It's just a whole knock-on effect, isn't it? So, you know, we had quite a run of bad luck with shipping when Brexit hit. Um, but fingers crossed, things are moving smoothly at present. I think everything at the European warehouse is running on time, so that is good. Right, nearly there. Okay, give these a curl. Think about what I'm doing because I'm going to be chopping up that bird slightly. I am going to take off that from there and snip off this flower. And I can save that one for something else most definitely. So I've done a bit of chopping into that image. I just need to stamp myself a greeting. I haven't given myself, let me just grab a piece of scrap. Not really sure what width. Ah, oh, my Mac just timed out. And better bring in my mat. And we just open up, oh, I've got it open already, the evergreen ink. I'm going to stamp that as straight as I can. Straight down on. I think I have a little bit of fluff on my stamp. Can you see? I'm not going to fuss with that for now. And then we'll just snip that off. bring back in our base and then pull out my bow punch hoping I'll get two out of here yeah I should do so I just want the large sprig here and I want two of those that was a good size that worked well and then I could get probably Two smaller ones out of that piece so I'll save that got to stop saving all the tiny bits but I know that I will if I punch those I will use them then I also need before I put that away two of these in white just the little sprig it looks like a bud a little bud stem And then we will stick these down. I'm going to pop these on dimensionals because the rest of my card is pretty flat. So 
So we're going to start with this one and just pop it there. Give my beard a bit of a twizzle. I think I might chop that bit of branch off. I don't think I need that. Give him some dimension as well. And pop. Hmm. Maybe I will lift and turn that a bit. I just want it to be at a different angle. I just want my bird sitting up here. And then this flower, curl the leaves up, another dimensional on the back, I've got very Tombow fingers, and we'll just pop that one under here, so it kind of looks like it's joining on to the branch here like that so i've just kind of switched where the the images are you could actually pull that one up and have it so the bird is just tucking under and then with these leaves you see me curl these just be very gentle how you do it because you can easily just tear them off and going to attach those pop our greeting before we do that we'll put this little strip down here I'm just going to trim that so it sits inside that embossed box a bit of Tombow and a lot came out all in one go. Let's pop that one. Oh, stuck to me. I told you I had Tombow fingers. Let's give them a wipe. I think I see a hint of blue in the sky out of this Velux. It's looking very hopeful. A couple of dimensionals behind here. Bring the layers up and then we'll have that one just down at the bottom. We might just trim off these edges just because I'm going to wedge them underneath these flowers and wipe the end of my Tombow. If if there's too much, then quite often it will hit the Tombow that I've put or the dimensional behind the flower and then it won't go in far enough. So just a little bit of Tombow on the edge. Alfie's snoring away under here. And then we'll just hold that one down. Oop, didn't hold it very well, did I? Let's just press it. I didn't want it to stick to. That's it. Let's actually hold the bit that's got adhesive on it. Maybe we'll put a bit more on this one just to make sure. And then this one can go under here. Move you over a bit. And then these two little ones going to feed in as well just for an extra bit of interest doesn't really matter where just so oh, it just breaks up let's just push it like that I think it's easier <laughs> it's because I'm trying not to get glue on my fingers Move you around a bit. I 
and then I'm going to pull in and this is do this is slightly dodgy doing it this way but I just feel I'm going to line it in better once I've got my stamped images so what I'm going to do pull this back in check your in shot ink up this splat stamp i'm going to stamp it off and then with with a wipe i'm just going to wipe the bottom make sure there's no ink on there because i don't want it to touch my bird so it's just a very faint so ink it up stamp it off and then just wipe the bottom of the stamp because there could be some excess ink on there that would then transfer onto here Maybe we'll have one up there. So I could have done that ahead of time, but sometimes it's tricky because you don't know where you're placing these parts. And then just to finish, we'll have a butterfly that was trying to get away. I had two that were trying to get away. One up here. And then those lovely little metallic pearls. You'll see the silver ones underneath. I can use my putty. I'm in need of a new bit of putty on there, aren't I? And we'll just pick up a couple and pop them down here just to kind of balance things a little. I was going to put them in like a trio and then with the butterfly, I felt that they didn't really kind of sit right. So, so there we go. We've got a bit of texture, a bit of background colour that's quite subtle. Um, I've, I've kind of chopped into the bird. If I show you my original, I was a little bit more intense with my flowers, with the colouring. So if you're just hopping on, I've used my daubers with the inks just to add quick colour to the flowers and the bird. My background was done with a blending brush. So there we go. So hopefully you have enjoyed a spot of inspiration with the Friendly Hello stamp set. And as I mentioned, this is a free set. Oh, my Mac's frozen. Free set when you spend £90 during the celebration promotion. Just reading comments. Sorry, yeah. Oh, Facebook, you are annoying frustrating um hopefully if you're catching up on the replay please let me know put hashtag replay and then i'll know that you've come back and um had a little catch up on what i've been doing and seeing the finished process so remember celebration a couple of things to point out so this is the bundle that i've used it's a stamp set haven't used the DSP, but I've shown you that and I've used the DSP before. Um, but loads of beautiful ideas. But I wanted to chat with you about the other opportunities. So you can just earn free products when you place an order. If you were to host a workshop or a party, however you like to call it, if you've got a few crafty friends who like the products, if you bundle all your orders together, and you get to £275, then you earn the Carmen Camellia stamp set for free. So that's really, really pretty. I've got one of those yet, but not inked it up. Um, and then, of course, the best deal of the moment is joining my team. So if you've got a little wish list of products that you would really like, the best deal is joining. It's £99. You choose £130 of product of your choice. So you choose what goes in your kit. There's no pressure to do Facebook Lives or classes. You could just be your own best customer and enjoy the discounts 
as a demonstrator. But this month and February, you will get to choose two stamp sets for free on top of the join offer. Well, the general join. Um, it's always a good deal, the general deal. So it's £99, get £130 a product and you choose two stamp sets of your choice for free. Now, that cannot be a celebration item and it cannot be a host stamp set that are in the back of the book. Um, but yeah, it's a really great opportunity. Please, if you don't have a demonstrator already um, you would, and you would like catalogues, please get in touch and I can get some out in the post tube. I've got tons here. Um, but if you want information about the join offer, if you just want to have, you know, a really informal chat, please just contact me and I will just fill you in on all the details. Um, and we can go from there and there's no pressure, definitely no pressure. Okay, had these arrive yesterday. I am excited to play with these. I didn't get the stamp set that goes with them, but these are the beautiful shapes dies. They are from the new mini catalog. I love the hexagons. Still got my hexagon punch, use it all the time. And I love that we've got some layering circles in here. Um, really, really good set. So keep an eye out. There'll be something coming for that very, very soon. So what else do I need to mention? I've got another creative escape coming up in July. I've got my retreat. So this time I'm doing my retreat with a twist. So it's a two day event at Bowden as usual, but I'm throwing in the option of a different workshop on the Sunday. Um, you can join my daughter from Mindful Mandra, Mantra Embroidery and do a hoop workshop with her on the Sunday. So there's an option, you can stamp with me for the whole weekend or you can do a day stamping and crafting with me and then a day with Sophie so there are options so if you would like information about that please get in touch I'm booking is only open for oh is it just another two weeks I haven't actually advertised it yet and the email has gone out to everyone in my contacts list um I have to check on the date on that I can't remember was it the end of February I can't remember but I've only got a few places left so yeah, if you're interested in that, please give me a shout. But And don't forget also, let's just grab these samples. We've got my Rainbow of Happiness class in the post. So stack of cards. We're doing masculine ones. We're doing feminine ones. Get kits to create 12 cards. And there's an option to add on the bundle if you want. So anyway, enough waffle. Hope you've enjoyed my projects today. Please come back very soon and say hello and please just take care on your travels and stay safe so i bid you farewell and see you very soon so bye for now